When Mrs. Hughes looked at her son, who was carefully arranging food in the refrigerator, she sighed and said, James, it's hard for you. I don't know how else to help you. After all, my father and I also do not earn that much, and we pay for the apartment. But it's easier for us because we have a stable pension, and you have new hardships at your factory every month. I thought that maybe we should sell a plot with a garden. James sat down on a chair, took his mother's hand and said, No, don't do it. The garden is vital because carrots, beets, greens, cabbage, and much more grow there. And all this in the store costs money. Maria needs vitamins every day. We can't feed her with cereals alone. Now, I don't earn that much, but over time, the situation will definitely change. Mrs. Hughes ran her hand through his hair and said sadly in her heart, You look like your father. He too was content with little. I remember Michael bringing homemade food to the wedding table instead of store-bought drinks and delicacies, and all the guests were satisfied. Therefore, you are right when you say, we need to protect what we have. Mrs. Hughes' son worked as an ordinary locksmith in a factory. At the time, he didn't receive a higher education, but James didn't regret it because he did his job perfectly, and his superiors appreciated him. He had the opportunity to study later, but he had a family. Then his daughter Maria was born, and he no longer had time to study. Then his wife died under the wheels of a drunk driver. He was then sentenced to only three years, and now James is raising his daughters alone. He no longer thinks about studying because he doesn't have such an opportunity. Mrs. Hughes took some bills from her purse and handed them to her son. Here's some money. I wanted to save money for my own dental treatment, but my son's problems are more important to me. Such conversations between James and his mother often happened because she periodically brought them food. Mrs. Hughes looked at her watch and began to get ready. Okay, I'll go feed your father. He will watch football today and he asked me to bake ruddy pies. By the way, he asked if you have a desire to go fishing with him. James loved to fish, but this time he refused. I promised Maria I would take her to the circus. I'm uncomfortable when other parents can afford it, and your son has to make excuses for his daughter so as not to look like a laughingstock. Mom, this Saturday I will organize a nice walk for Maria. The daughter was happy when her father took her to the circus. She had a lot of fun. Maria watched circus performances with other guys. James was sincerely glad that he organized a good weekend for his daughter. He bought cotton candy and they went home together. The beginning of March was approaching and in some places, it was impossible to pass without rubber boots. This circumstance didn't interfere with James at all, but hard times came for his daughter. He needed to buy a second shoes, but a couple of days ago, James made another payment for the mortgage, which was issued during his wife's lifetime and paid for utilities. He only had money left to eat. When James called his mother, he heard the bad news. Son, I would love to help you, but your father is seriously ill. Doctors prescribed him expensive medicines, and I don't know how we will solve this problem. On the same day, he and his daughter visited their parents. Despite his illness and pain, Michael sat on a chair and sat his granddaughter on his knees. Maria, I haven't seen you for a long time. You have become quite mature and beautiful like your mother. Maria replied, Thank you, grandfather. Tell me how you feel. Michael wiped the sweat from his forehead and laughingly replied, I pretend to be sick, and all the doctors say that I'm sick, but I think they're all lies. I wanted to visit you yesterday, but your grandmother won't let me. She told me to get better. It's clear that James' father was joking, but the symptoms of the disease betrayed him and soon Michael took the pills. He became short of breath and his face turned red. Mrs. Hughes gave him medicine and then took her granddaughter into the kitchen. James was alone with his father. My son, I know you are in trouble. I am ashamed that I can't help you. I have a small stash. My mother doesn't know about her. Bring me my favorite book. James complied with his father's request and a minute later gave his father a collection of poems by the famous classic. There's very little here, but maybe you have enough. James counted out the bills and said, There is a shop in town that sells good shoes. I'll try to go there. Maybe I'll get lucky. I won't say anything to my daughter yet. I know her size, and I will surprise her. But James clearly understood that his father gave him the money that he could spend on his treatments. But Michael concluded that his granddaughter needed them more. James decided to go to that store for the weekend. In the meantime, 
his daughter went to school without a second pair of shoes. The teachers went to meet her hallway and didn't scold her, knowing that her father tries very hard so that their family doesn't need anything. But soon, a new math teacher came. The new female teacher began to show her anger to the students from the first days, and if one of them didn't learn their homework well, she gave them bad grades without any regrets. And only Maria has been lucky so far, because she had excellent academic performance and excellent knowledge of the subject. The girl not only studied well, she wanted to achieve the highest performance, and almost all the teachers appreciated it, except for the new female teacher, Mrs. Roberts. She hated Maria even more because of this. After all, she couldn't give her a bad mark. Every day she called her to the blackboard, but each time she received exhaustive answers to the material being passed. The circumstance infuriated the teacher, and she urgently needed a reason for nitpicking. Such an occasion was quickly found when Mrs. Roberts was on duty at the entrance to the school. The students came and changed the second pair of shoes, and Maria went through the turnstile, wiping her outdoor boots well. The teacher stopped her, looked into her eyes, and then took her hand and led her into the classroom. Maria couldn't imagine what would happen to her next. In class, when the bell rang, Mrs. Roberts took her to the blackboard and sarcastically said, Just look at what she wears to school. All the children wear a second pair of shoes, and Maria ignores the established order. Maybe you have nothing to wear, so you tell us and we'll raise money for you, right guys? The people started whispering back, and several pupils laughed like horses. Maria began to cry and began to escape from the tenacious hands of the teacher. Leave me alone, I just forgot my shoes at home. The female teacher, with undisguised anger and a sense of victory, allowed her to sit at her desk. Maria spent the whole lesson looking at the textbook and a notebook through a veil of wet eyes. A boy sitting next to her tugged at her sleeve and handed her a candy to cheer her up. Maria had never felt such shame in front of the whole class, and the female teacher joyfully rejoiced. She couldn't give her a bad mark, but she humiliated the girl in another way. Maria came home gloomier than a cloud, but her father was still at work, and this was reassuring her. In the evening, when he came home, the daughter could hardly hide her depressed state. James intuitively felt that trouble had happened. Daughter, you have been worrying about something all evening. Did something happen to you? Didn't you learn your lesson, or did you get a bad mark? Maria ran to her room with tears in her eyes. James realized that he had started the wrong way, waited a couple of minutes, and knocked on the door. The daughter reluctantly allowed him to enter. Maria, forgive me, I had a hard day, and therefore I said the wrong thing. How did your classes go? What's new with you? The girl wiped away her tears and said, Today, they shamed me in front of everyone, and almost called me a beggar because I don't have a second pair of shoes. James was surprised. How could they afford it? And who humiliated you? Were the kids from class involved here? Maria nodded, but then added, Not exactly. Our new math teacher laughed at me. She wants to give me a bad mark for my mistakes. But she didn't succeed. I always answered with excellence, so she drew attention to my shoes. She said we couldn't afford to buy another pair of shoes, and she offered to raise money in front of the whole class. Maria began to cry again, but James hugged her and began to calm her down. Daughter, don't worry. Tomorrow, tell this teacher that I will meet her and she will learn what poverty is. The daughter pulled herself together and had a hearty dinner with her father. While she was doing her homework, James wrote down something in his notebook. Who could have guessed how this meeting with Mrs. Roberts would turn out? In the morning, he took his daughter to school and he called to work and took the day off. He went to the same shoe store with the great desire to intercede for Maria and reason with the female teacher. He was lucky as he found the right size of shoes, and he bought them. It was almost 11 o'clock on the clock, and Maria came to school and immediately caught the eye of the math teacher. Again, you didn't find money? The poor girl is completely impoverished. Maria said in response, My dad will come to school today. He wants to talk to you, and you will know what justice is. Mrs. Roberts pulled her aside and quipped. Are you trying to scare me? Let your farther collective farmer come. We will laugh at him with the whole class. Maria almost burst into tears. She felt so sorry for her father that she could hardly contain herself. The girl pulled her hand back and went to class. According to the schedule, mathematics was the fourth lesson. When James came to school, he easily found the class in which his daughter was supposed to be. He understood that a lesson was going on now, but he couldn't wait and went into the classroom. Hello everyone, Maria, I brought you shoes. You forgot them at home. 
Mrs. Roberts expected to see something like a simple man, dressed cheaply and gloomily. But she saw a man in a suit that fit him perfectly. Even the pupils in the class opened their mouths and looked at James. He turned to the female teacher and said, I can see from your expression that you are a little confused. I dare say that I too am a little discouraged, because you are dressed in such outdated clothes that my grandmother used to wear in ancient times. You don't follow fashion at all. Maria, try in some shoes. I shouldn't have made a mistake. The daughter went up to a father, hugged him, and cried. Dad, thank you for having me. At that moment, even those people who had previously laughed at her became quiet and began to point their fingers in the direction of Mrs. Roberts. The female teacher was still in a state of prostration, but when she came to herself, she screamed loudly. Get out of the classroom! Stop teaching me fashion! The noise was heard by the female director of the school, who was just passing by the classroom. When she opened the door, she almost ran into James. What are you doing here? After a pause, Maria's father replied. I brought my daughter a second pair of shoes, which she forgot at home. I really don't like that she was almost called a beggar because of this. The female director turned to the guys and asked, Confess, who said that? The whole class pointed to the teacher. Mrs. Roberts, I didn't expect this from you. What do you allow yourself? You work with us for a short time and already humiliate children. The blushing female teacher sat down on a chair. James wanted to leave, but the female director stopped him. Sorry that you had to go through with this. We know your family well and how you try for Maria. This will not happen again, and we will punish the culprit. After that, even those children who had previously tried to harm her in every possible way began to respect Maria. Mrs. Roberts was severely reprimanded and added unpaid study hours. As a result, she resigned of her own free will and left the walls of the school a month later. Maria became even more proud of her father because he actually proved that he was able to stand up for her.